Well, good morning, City Church and friends. Uh, we're doing things a little different this week with the devotions. Uh, we're between our Partnership Sunday, which we had yesterday, uh, and our Mission and Ministry celebration, which is next Sunday. Uh, and throughout this week, we want to dedicate ourselves particularly to a season of prayer as we seek to train and generously give labourers to resource and plant churches in Manchester, the North West, and beyond. And to help us with that, we've invited Tom, Ali and Jack uh, from the prayer team to deliver the devotions on prayer on Tuesday through to Thursday of this week. Uh, so we've got that to look forward to in the coming days. But we've also decided to, to have a day of, of prayer and fasting this coming Friday. That's entirely voluntary, but we'd love for City Church regulars to take part. And, and so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time this morning in this devotion talking about the role of fasting in the New Testament with a particular focus on Acts chapter 13. So I guess that raises the question, well, well what is fasting? It's not an exclusively Christian thing, that's for sure. 1.8 billion Muslims around the world are currently fasting because it's the month of Ramadan. They do it because it's commanded. It's, it's one of the five pillars of Islam. It is a matter of obedience for Muslims. That's not the case for Christians. There is no passage in the New Testament where Christians are commanded to fast. But it does seem that they're expected to fast. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Jesus says to his disciples, when you fast. He assumes that they're going to do it, even though he doesn't command them to. So, so what is fasting? John Piper gives a really helpful definition. He says, it is the temporary renunciation of something that is in itself good, like food, in order to intensify our expression of need for something greater namely God and his work in our lives. That's it. Fasting isn't a command to be obeyed by Christians. No, it's a help to be utilised. As our stomachs hunger, it, it points us to our souls hungering after Christ. As our time for eating is relinquished, our opportunity to hunger after God in prayer is increased. But I guess the question is, well, why are we doing this particularly at this time of mission and ministry in the life of the church? Well, well turn with me to Acts chapter 13. This is a crucial turning point in the book of Acts. The gospel is about to go global. So read with me uh, from verse 2. While they, that, that's the leaders of the church in Antioch, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Do you see what's going on? The leaders of the church in Antioch are fasting. They're expressing their desperate dependence upon God and, and their desire to be guided by him as they work out what role they're to play in the mission of Jesus. And God answers them in an astonishing way, directing them to send out their best, Barnabas and Saul, who, who will later be called Paul. And this sacrificial act was probably the most significant missionary venture in the history of the church. It led to the gospel being carried into Western Europe and turning the world upside down. This Mission and Ministry Sunday we are hungering after God. We're depending upon him in prayer and we're longing, longing that he might use our weak efforts to turn Manchester, the northwest and beyond upside down. Well, will you join with me in fasting this coming Friday as we seek the Lord's guiding hand and as we seek his empowerment in this missionary endeavour. Thanks so much for listening.